It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Mariah Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Mario. How are you? Hello, Dr. Mariah. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been looking at, at you and admiring you. The I love earring. the way it cuts Thank you. you right here. It Thank looks you. Thank really you. nice. You look quite sophisticated. Thank <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> Let me take off my glasses so you can see the fury. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. My weekend was very, very restful. Oh. I'm so grateful for that. So, yeah, I have been under undue stress. I just knew that I was feeling stressed, but I just couldn't point at what it was that was causing it. I just didn't feel like I was doing anything out of the ordinary. It took my mom coming and just stay with me and pointing out. She was like, you don't ever rest. Mm. You're constantly on your feet. You know, and every, she was just pointing out some of the yeah. things that I do. It's like, you're constantly doing yeah. something. Of course, you're stressed. And of course, for the first time in my adult life, I have three pimples on my face. I've never <laughs> had most. I've oh, I didn't even one. notice. I have one. Two. The third one is dry. So and now mm. I know for sure that I'm stressed. Wow. <laughs> this is the cow exec. your hair for <laughs> this. <laughs> How are you doing, Nima? I'm fine. I wish I could say I rested. I really oh. want. You know, I had enjoyed my sleep for Thursday, Abby. Was it Friday? Wednesday? And I really wished I rested. But with a child with an infection, one, sure. one of that, you just can't say that. I'm <laughs> grateful, Sham. We resumed to school this morning. I hope I don't get called again. Mm. Somebody's running any temperature anyway. The latest stream around was running a bit of temperature. Mm. And it was so energetic on Friday. I thought it was <laughs> you children for you. you have to. Hi, Dean. What I'm very good. Okay, I thought it was some kind of ball. No, 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 no. Hi, How are you doing? I'm good. Um, grateful to God. Hi. My weekend was very... It was a combination. Like, I found balance. You know, so it was eventful, and yet the moment I'm out of the event, I rested. So on Friday, we had um, real estate developers brunch, and I was really excited. After the show, I rushed down there. I found that I was the only woman. <laughs> and I know there are other female developers, but I don't know why um, Coach Chudi was the one that put it together. Um, just, I was the only female that he picked amongst the um, other women developers. And it was really interesting to have conversations about real estate with other people that are doing exactly what you're doing and they're not, there's no hiding. It was like, oh, this is my challenge. This is what's going on. It was a very interesting conversation. Then from there, I went to a private viewing. Mrs. Obeche, thank you so much of um, The Woman King. Beautiful oh. movie, so much to eat. We were, like I just ate, 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 oh. ate, ate. <laughs> Then yesterday, my, um, my team, they start online. We went to Marriott and it was just fun, conversation, fellowship. It was so much. I got home and I slept. So it was like I had eventful weekend, but every time I got home like this, I just go into the room, duvet, mm. <laughs> and sleep. So it was a good balance. I put yeah, too I much feel lemon good. in this. Oh, oh okay. rather. It, you want to oh. share? It's a lot of Between. lemon. It's okay. I'll manage it's it. It's okay. Now I know. Next time, just two tablespoons. <laughs> yeah, that was quite just a lot. Poured, yeah, yeah. Sort of, that's true. Was I because thinking? you're not used to the small cup. Yeah, would, yeah thank you. Anyways, I rested too. Okay. I loved my weekend because there's absolutely yeah, nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very rare. Oh, I started off Saturday morning and I just was home. I could make some breakfast, yeah. some lunch. You know. <laughs> we just back. mommy and wife. No, just mommy and God bless you. <laughs> Sunday we went to church, we came, came back, back home. just rested. I anyway, loved it. You know, I love those kind of weekends, you know. <laughs> That's going to break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. We're going to start with the nation. Disquiet in PDP, not NWC, over the 10 billionaire nomination fees. Anxieties as CBN sets to raise interest rates to new high. Court fixes Wednesday for judgment in Messina versus the one case. Can president to youth don't be politicians' body shields? Mm. Anti-all theft, AIG confirms seizure of 123 vessels. Why we have not endorsed Peter Obi by Ohaneze. And petrol subsidy hits 2.57 trillion naira as supply rises by 10%. All right, which story are we starting okay, with? I'll start with the oil theft. Um... The IGP, that is of, that's the Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, uh, was speaking with the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on investigating oil 
lifting theft and the impact on petroleum production and revenue. So while speaking to them, <coughs> he revealed that his special task force on petroleum and illegal bunkering um, confiscated 123 oil vessels. And these vessels comprise of tankers, lorries, barges, buses, and other vehicles. Um, this, he said the unit had also seized over 1.3 million liters of um, AGO, that's um, diesel, 135,000 liters of crude oil, over 4,000 um, liters of um, PMS, that's petrol, and 45,000 liters of engine oil. He also said that uh, they are also in the process of prosecuting 52 oil theft-related cases nationwide. Um, he also um, assured that he's working on developing the capacity of their officers so that um, they get practical training and acquire top-notch investigative and operational assets to sustain the fight against oil theft and other crimes that's capable of sabotaging the country's economy. This was just giving a rundown. He al they also gave specific um, examples of um, people that have been arrested, um, some of the uh, places that they have gone at the, in the creeks where some of this illegal bunkering is happening and some of the places that they've closed down. So it's just to show that the police is uh, fighting this war against oil theft and giving us a you know report on that. So let me take the medical and dental council association council of Nigeria. Sorry, that's the medical and dental council of Nigeria. They you know also have a tribunal, and it's fortunate to know that seven doctors are presently being tried, and um, two are already slated for judgment. I, I like that they gave the names of these doctors but they didn't say what offenses they have been tried for, General, generally misconduct, um, alleged professional misconduct. So this gives us hope. You know, Nigerians constantly call out some doctors for mismanaging patients, but then you, you will not hear the end of that issue. So I love that the, as you say, the council has brought out the list of those seven of them that they are presently trying and hoping, looking forward to judgment for their cases. I hope that the details of whatever it was, the issues are, uh, We'll come out when the trial. All right, so the spokesperson <clears throat> for Haneze Ndigo, that's, uh, uh, let me get the name, I think is Mr. Ogbunam. I'm trying to get the first name. Um, he has said that Ohaneze will not directly um, endorse Peter Obi of the Labour Party. And the reason is because he said that um, um, I don't support any, anybody running uh, Peter Obi down. He says that Peter Obi is not for Ohaneze, he's a, he's, a, he's a national candidate. And it will be self-glorification to begin to endorse yourself. So according to him, Ohanese's philosophy has been to get a president from the Igbo extraction. And now that's, that, that's been achieved uh, as, as a candidate in the, in the coming elections, that they are fine with that. And they have members across all parties. So they cannot be glorifying Peter Obi individually. That they, they, and they cannot criticize uh, the, the former governor of Abia State or the governor of, uh, I think, um, Abia State, the former governor of... Uh, Ebony State and um, former governor and uh, governor of Imo State, Opudadima, for supporting their own APC candidate. That there are different um, members within all parties, but they would not, as a as, as an organization, formally endorse Peter Obi. I'll say what the current president said. So the Christian Association of Nigeria, the president Daniel Oko has urged um, Nigerians to use their PVC and avoid becoming, um, I like the word he used, body shields of politicians, saying that no Nigerian should carry arms against each other based on any political difference. But we should be intelligent enough to know that in the past election um, period, some politicians have promised, um, as if, have induced elections and have not fulfilled the promises to electorate. He said they offered inducement on election day only to, to, to disappear after their victory and that Nigerians should be wiser. Use your PVC in order to vent your anger against, polit against politicians, not taking arms from yourself to hurt another Nigerian. Mm. And I think this is the message I want to hear more of from yeah. Khan. Punch, politics and security. Demand for bulletproof vehicles, special security gadgets surges. Nigeria at 62 and, and ASU strike now. Khan tells federal government. Police seizes 123 oil vessels and other begin prosecution. Nigeria's economic outlook uncertain, welfare worsening, says World Bank. Lagos, Ibano traffic, police kidnappers exchange gunfire, traveler rescued. Seven Lagos passengers burnt in crash, firefighters attacked. 
and Nigeria's economic outlook on certain welfare was since World Bank. Okay, which story are we starting with? Okay, okay. the Lagos Ibadan traffic. Right. Um, so, uh, say the men of the Ogun State Police Command have rescued a kidnapped victim, Shehu Anafi, and have arrested a suspected kidnapper, Ibrahim Abubakar. His name is boldly on the newspaper. Uh, so, um, the story started that this particular driver driving from Iloring, he said once they got to, he had um, seven passengers with him, when they got to long, the Long Bridge, and there was traffic, as we all know, so he took one of the untied access roads. And while they were on the road, a group of men, gunmen, just you know stopped them. And everyone got out of the car, ran into the bushes. Said after a while, all of them regrouped, got into the car, realized that one person was missing. So he went and reported. The driver went to the police and reported the case. Thankfully, the police acted quickly. They went into the bush, said looking for these people and then they found them. They had a gun duel, as they say. Oh uh, many of them were shot, they ran away with injuries, but one person um, was captured, and that is the Ibrahim Abubakar. And then um, the person that was um, alleged Shehu and Afi, the 62-year-old man that was kidnapped, was also rescued immediately. So well done to the police for a well good job. Well you know. And then well the done. police is also asking that if there's anyone, hospitals especially, people that come with um, gunshot wounds, they should please alert to the police. Well done. Fantastic. Okay. okay, so following the insecurity issue, the major headline in the punch has exposed what's the reaction of politicians are to these insecurities as they are preparing for the 2023 elections. <coughs> punch article says that they've yeah. seen an increase in the demand for um, small, um, bulletproof um, SUVs and wow. uh, um, uh, uh, cars. They also took an inventory of several attacks on politicians tra traveling on the roads, especially in the southeast, and they made emphasis on the um, Ifayin Ubaz attack. They also talked about Dino Milaye, took an inventory of all of them, but now there's serious demand in reaction to that, and that is simply an admission to the insecurity that you know, most of them shy away from talking about. So there was um, an accident that happened uh, at Yanowuru, inbound Third Million Bridge, seven people were burnt to death. Um, it happened on Sunday in a Mazda bus. And uh, according to the report, the, the driver was at full speed when this happened and he hit a covert and the bus was flipped over and caught fire. Um, he did not keep to one lane and was trying to connect um, into the Yanuary. So um, according to him, when he got to the wide junction, the, the wide junction, the driver tried to join the lane, but suddenly a vehicle obstructed him by the side and he served, swerved back, hit the covert and the tire bus since it was on stop speed and the bus that I mean bystanders tried to rescue a few people, but unfortunately none was able to be rescued. I know that and this happened between two forty three PM on Sunday. Um, and um, according to the reports, the Lukoyuju fire station also the closest station to help put out the fire um, as soon as they heard. But they couldn't even get there. Some yes, people were now we hurling, um, um, they were hurling different items at them, mm. even as they were trying to get to the place. Mm. It, even though they were late, at least uh, you'd have allowed them to try and put out the fire. No, but I don't know, well, maybe they missed primary school, but now we respect bullion vans and the sirens more than we respect ambulances, fire and trucks. Fire trucks. And we need to re, yeah. re educate. educate people. Mm. Okay, let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. <laughs> okay, thanks for staying with us. Still reviewing for live TV. <laughs> Who is talking point? <laughs> not taking your story talk away. No, I haven't. So Khan is speaking to um, still the same. Essentially, it's linked to the story I took earlier, where Khan president was speaking at the event on Wednesday, and he was calling out to, that's Dr. Daniel Oko, was calling out to the federal government and the leadership of the academic unions, academic staff union of universities to end the seven-month-old strike. He's saying that Nigeria at 62, the issues that were facing, because it was an independence day, um, event, a service to mark Independence Day in advance, and it was calling on the federal government to do all that is necessary to end the strike. He also mentioned how, like several things are not working, that the year 2023 is the year of our test as a nation, and rather than 
it, it was it was just a case of mm. this is the time to right. we had we experienced um, um, a lot in 20, 2020 with the end um, um, and, and we should do better that the ASU should end strike uh, end the strike action the federal government should listen to them and do whatever it takes All right. to resolve the issue. Daily Sun, Wikis camp plots for Mimico to replace Ayu. 2023, don't vote leaders who will kill you, Jonathan wants Nigerians. <laughs> 2023, we are consulting for Pan-Nigeria platform, says Dogara. Oshin Tribunal begins sitting as Uyetola PDP express confidence in judiciary. Bauchi bans female students from studying with male in same classroom. Obasanjo Okonjo Wella push for increased investment in electric electricity. And pipeline surveillance governor Diri, INC resolved Tompolo and Asari Ateke rift. Okay, mm -hmm. let's start with the interesting Bauchi story. Yes, let me start with the story in Bauchi state. So uh, uh, it's um, in Bauchi beginning today, male and female students in secondary schools in five towns in Bauchi state can no longer study together in one classroom or engage in other extracurricular activities together in the state. Um, the Commissioner for Education, Dr. Ali Utilde, um, was the one that confirmed this uh, new policy. He said that they had to take this decision, especially in schools in Bochi, Misa, Ningi, Jamare, Azare areas. And he also said that they took this um, decision to promote morals among children in secondary school. They said that they've seen an increase in immorality, especially sexual immorality amongst their students. And that um, they are afraid that because of this immorality will affect the gains of education that they have you know, achieved in the past 10 years. Um, he, he said that um, most, of this are, most of these children are of the age where you know, they are coming into themselves sexually and so experimenting that it has even led to the point where some of them really young are marrying each other. And for them, this just shows that eventually uh, parents may get you know, spooked and take their children out of school um, and all the gains, of course, of education over the years will be lost because of these sexual immoralities. And so for them, they feel that this is the best way to handle it, to separate them for classes and for extracurricular activities. I took this story, I found it quite interesting, and I'm happy that you know, we put other things into consideration. And um, this may not be maybe the best way, but I think it's a good first step to take until you know, they can sit down and find, <laughs> because there is, there is a positive in when they, mingle, when they interact yeah. socially and intellectually. Yeah. Yes, but then if this is a problem, I like that they're handling it quickly. Former, good, uh, former president of the country of Nigeria, President Goodluck Jonathan, was at um, Uyo on the 35th anniversary of the state. And he used that opportunity to talk to Nigerians, Nigerian electorates to vote wisely. He said, do not vote killers. He said that those who will kill to become leaders will also kill to remain in office, mm. to remain leaders. And uh, you know, Nigerians will be very careful. Those who will carry knives, guns, and other gadgets to go and kill people because of politics are enemies of society. Say and nice guns. Guns. Yes? Sorry, I thought you said nice guns. Knives. Oh, okay. Nice. <laughs> okay. 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 Maybe my tongue has affected it. So sometimes we lose my consonants. This from my place. So he said knives, okay. guns, and you know who kill people. They are, the, they are enemies of society. I agree with him totally. Mm. He also commended the governor of the state, uh, you know, for his his uh, achievement and his in his administration. But then he particularly emphasized that we should not focus on only governorship. They should focus on House of Assembly, houses, you know, National Assembly um, offices as well and carefully select leaders. I think that's the way to go. All right, so former president, uh, Lucia Gwabasanjo, was also speaking at the United Nations General Assembly. He was talking about power, according to him, was specifically saying that uh, it's imperative that Africans and their friends and their partners uh, ensure development to put together and raise sufficient investment to get enough power to help Africa, because without mm. power, we cannot develop Africa. And also the... Um, Epos. The World Trade Organization boss, Dr. Okonjo Iwela, also echoed the same thing, saying that there's, um, the continent cannot industrialize or have solid co um, continental manufacturing base without power and energy. According to, her, uh, we, according to the International Energy Agency, we need about $28 billion annual investment to cover, cover that gap in investment in power. 
and that's the only way we can, Africa can develop. And they said quite a few things, saying that even as we strive towards renewable energy, we must focus on mutually beneficial energy investment for Africa and the world by taking opportunities to harness this growth. So um, a couple of weeks back, a contract was awarded to um, Tom Polo mm. for, to, to secure our pipelines against the crude oil um, theft. It was a 48 billion naira contract, 4 billion naira per month. And this has led to crisis within the Ijo mm. Meda Delta people. And the crisis now, the governor of Bayosa State has stepped in to resolve the crisis between Tompolo, King Ateke, and um, King Ateke, Tom, and um, Chief Asari Dokubo, saying that um, Asari Dokubo and Tompolo are brothers. We are all brothers. We shouldn't let this contracts given to one person now cause division and take peace away from the mm. community. So his, his drive was to bring peace back to the community and encourage every one of them to work together. The contract might have gone to one person, but everybody is going to execute the contract. Mm. Yeah. And, and, that, and everybody will be paid and all hands must be on deck to secure the oil pipelines. However, I want to um, I, I mention what um, the Ijo Youth Council um, spokesperson mentioned at the end of this meeting because they were also presented there. He said that the military is culpable in the oil thefts and that the military in doing a cover-up, according to him, that it is in cover-up that they have been committing geno genocide within some um, Niger Delta community, mentioning five, um, Tuoma, Billy, Okogbe, Udoda communities of Degema and Hoda local government areas have been victims of genocide carried by the military in the Niger Delta region. For them, the military comes in to say that there is oil pipeline being, I mean, um, vandalism is taking place there, and then killings take place within their communities. And they are saying, you people are the one causing the problem. We would work with the military to protect the pipeline, but we don't want the military to take advantage of our people or hurt our people. And I think that this is not a newspaper release and mm. announcement. It should be duly investigated because yes. we're losing a lot of money and we don't want to lose lives as well. Yeah, this is an let's, that add, is yes. let's add um, that the leader of uh, PANDEV, that's the Pan Niger Delta mm. Forum, um, Chief Edwin Clark, you know, is also looking at resolution, is supporting all these resolutions the governor is doing. Mm. My concern is that, you know, these yeah, are the right. same players mm. over the years and the communities continue to remain impoverished. Mm. So I hope that this time the job people are open, that, you know, they're asking for more than just pipeline surveillance. You uh, cannot, uh, what's so the thing? When we to share, we go there together, uh -huh, that kind of thing. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different right. result. So these are the same people that have been doing yes. the and posting the poverty. Let's move on quickly to Vanguard. Let's find a story we've not taken. PFN XSG of Lawal disowned bishops that met Tinumbu. PDP crisis. Atiku reaches out, moves to break Wiki's ranks. Five months of surveillance. Diri INC. I think you just took that story. No plan to tell to sell TCN says uh, BPE. Asu resorting to litigation will prolong strike says parents and nuns. Insecurity in Nigeria passing through hard times, says United Nations. Sarah sues FG for refusing to publish the Bachelor's $23 million loot. And don't vote for 2023. Don't vote for killers in 2023. Jonathan charges Nigerians. Okay, which story? Okay, let's do Nance and, um, uh, 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 and Naptap. Naptap, that's the Nigerian Parents Teachers Association of Nigeria. They are worried that this ASU Allah has ended up in court. And you know, court processes, there will be adjournment, there might not be speedy trials. They're saying this will further cause hardship on the student, that, you know, federal government should find an out-of-court solution to this. I think out-of-court is always faster. I hope that they... they well, when it's a special case like this, is there no way that the court can expedite, uh, you know, its yeah. process? Yes, of course. So that you don't really court alone. You know, sometimes the, it is the lawyers that are delaying. Yeah, no, so apart from that, courts sometimes are overwhelmed. Court, mm -hmm. There are other cases aside that, so that are presently in court already. Just because it's politically... Okay. I was just going to... I mean, forward. we've all been asking what happened to their bachelor loot, but thank God um, Sarah is taking the federal government to court to find out why they have not released the details of how the $23 million that was stolen by a bachelor um, was used and they need the government, and according to them, uh, let me see that. In the suit, Serap said that the Nigerian Constitution and the Freedom of Information Act and the country's international obligation impose transparency obligations on the federal government to widely publish the agreement on the $23 million loot. So we're waiting for them to do that so that we can see. Let's move on very quickly now to, we don't have any more time. Okay, that's all we can take on front page review, but um, we continue with the show. After the break, stay with us. We'll be right back.
Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Over the weekend, <laughs> an Abuja-based big boy, John Leon, was uh, popularly known as uh, flaunting loads of money on social media, encouraging his followers to hustle, as well as giving motivational talks <laughs> to Nigerian youths <laughs> on the need to work hard, has been arrested by the police for allegedly belonging to a kidnap syndicate responsible for several high-profile abductions and robbery in the state, hmm. another part of Niger State. Now, this story trended all weekend because people who were showing videos of him, you know, going to churches as a motivational speaker. Worshipping you know, God in tears. You know, and really praising God and thanking God and stuff like that. And you see, and we, and we then bring this story to this conversation. Like, okay, how do we even know? How do we, how do we get to this point mm -hmm. as a people where... We are so lavish in our lifestyle, yet behind closed doors, we do the worst things. And we're criminals, actually. What are your thoughts on this trending video? I mean, for those of you that haven't watched it, I think our producers will put some on the screen for you to have an idea what we're talking about. You can call us on 0812705 You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweet. Um, I remember there was a time I was having a conversation, I mean, my husband was just talking, and I think I was, I can't remember what I was saying, I, I can't remember what the conversation was, was about, but I remember he said something that struck me. He said, Morel, if you cannot say well, categorically, this is what this person is buying, mm -hmm. selling, to get money, yes. don't even go there. Because I think we were talking about maybe admiring or celebrating somebody, he said, Morel, I, I can't do these things, I, I can't celebrate anybody because I don't know. I know if I, if, I, if, I call, if I call this person's name, is it you're selling biscuits or you're selling rice? I know that this is how... I, you can't just tell me that you have money. So I can't be, I can't be, I can't be friends with people. I, don't, I can't explain but, but it. But this guy has a job. He runs an interior decorating... Um, he has a... It's called Lion, Lion interior Interiors. Hub. Yes, he has... He, he does... He brings in Turkey for If you remember, there was a video that we saw. Somebody was saying it. That ah, was TikTok. Someone was recording a video on um, Admiralty Way. Mm. Free coach. Like, ah, how many interior decorators do we need in this country? See, and way, you cannot tell me you're all really interior decors because we know ourselves. She was an interior decor. She did a video. So now, how can you just put these things here all on Admiralty? Just see all sorts. And I think it's just how many of you are doing interior decor? We know you're just fronting for some kind of business. So these are part of the issues yeah. that we've seen. But what are your thoughts when you saw this video? So for me, Hmm. For me, as a legitimate business hmm. woman that is counting each naira hmm. and growing it little yeah. by little, it, 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 makes it, it makes the journey harder because you are not having to... Everybody looks at you and would assume you are, you are not legit. Hmm. You have to now prove yourself hmm. legit. Hmm. And everybody assumes that everybody that has, that has made it hmm. did it illegally because of stories like this. And there are several success stories that are legitimate so, um, for me, it was just a sad moment. Especially when I now saw that he was also in church and he was crying in worship. You know, when you see the church side of people, it's supposed to make you feel like there is legitimacy to what this person is doing. I had a transaction with a lady, and I'm going to have to, ref I'm going to refund her because she has so much fear. I even told her, I said, see, this is your level of fear. I think I should give you back your money. She said, yes. I, she said, I cannot trust you based on social media. I cannot trust you based on social media. I said, I don't know what, because you, you are, she's just so stuck on the fact that it cannot be true. And that is, this is why it, it makes tougher for legitimate businesses to succeed because they see false social media. Like, I, I feel like I've already, this is who I am. But you've seen people that say this is who I am, and yet yeah. they have, it's a camouflage. So it is extremely, extremely sad to see young people still taking this path and it is important that we continue to speak truth to power when it happens. Mm -hmm. people, people were still supporting him and, and all of that. And asking questions, there's nothing wrong with you asking questions. What, your, what um, your husband said was very valid. If you don't know what the person is doing, ask. 
Are you serious? Is it inside this mm. uh, interior yeah. that you're making yeah. this kind of money? money? Show me the way. You know that kind of <laughs> thing. But it, I'm happy that it, yeah. the story came out and I'm, my heart goes out to everyone who's been, who suffered mm. for him to flaunt this wealth. Because mm. several people had cried. People have cried and some probably died in the course of him making this money that he was flaunting on social media. He's a kidnapper. Putting tears in people's faces so that you can smile and dance on Instagram. Ha. Huh. Hey, sit dancing. I'm telling so you. This doesn't represent the majority of Nigerians I know. Thank you. Nigerians are hardworking, struggling daily, facing, you know, obstacles in growth. Nigerians will invest money and something. I have been selling rice since 2019. If I tell you what my eyes have seen, you will see back business and go. If I thought of it this December and then I had customers waiting for their stock and they'll be demanding December. That's business for you. And so I know more Nigerians in that bracket who are daily doing neat, honest, sincere legal yeah. work. And they have been faced with life every day and they have not been criminally inclined. When you see people like this, now their choice, so that's how they are. Mm. Soft life, no work. You know, small work, plenty money. But you think, you Nima, know? that they will learn from, what's that guy's in the puppy guy? Puppy. Yeah, they, they, they'll learn from you the puppy. puppy guy. Oh, <laughs> they'll learn from that. Uh, uh, the generation are not apart, far yeah, apart. It's so, the same but Hush Puppy, as, no, it's not. Uh, and it would have been an example, something you've seen happened already. But all of them, him and Hush Puppy, they happen the same period. They are of the same era, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So, this doesn't in any way, does, this doesn't represent Nigeria. Yeah, and I hope that the example, that is necessary for the generations coming will be made of this person, mm. if truly. Because um, just last week, I was talking to a magistrate friend of mine, a chief magistrate, and I said, ah, that my case will be brought to your court. Those criminals, he said, auntie, don't you ever use such word again. I have suspects, I don't have criminals. And if mm. you charge them to my court, don't call them criminals until I find them. Guilty, so, yeah. so let's just assume it's a suspect okay. until... Your thoughts on this, man? Really mm. I don't understand how you'll be a kidnapper or a criminal, and then when they catch you, you are crying more than anybody. Yeah. How are you able to cry? I expect that when they catch you, you know. Yes, that, sir. Yes. Time is up. How? How are you begging and saying my wife has children? The people that you were kidnapping, you did not know that their own wives were getting pregnant and having babies. I could not believe it. For me, oh, I don't think it's a sad story. I think it's a story of victory because he's an example yet again, like Hush Puppy, to young people so that they know the end result mm. of behavior like that. So I'm happy that this happened. And I'm happy it happened on social media because it's people like that who flaunt money and make it look like, you know, we're working so hard and we have been especially blessed and especially taken out by God mm -hmm. to bless us. And then you have young people, especially young boys, working hard and thinking, Something's wrong with me. Ah. There's, I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Because how can this person be doing all this and still has enough money to but flaunt on social media? Yeah. I, I, also think, myself. I also want can to I think, do better? I also want to remind, my, remind us that a lot, of there, a lot of people have an agenda to discredit the Nigerian police. Mm. Mm -hmm. When we hear a lot, because sometimes they do work and we celebrate them. Sometimes they do mess up and we highlight those mess, the, the mess ups. However, we must remind ourselves that there's a whole syndicate of mm. Nigerians who are saying our job is to continually discredit this institution. Yes. Because we want them to, when, you, when they make this kind of arrests, mm. they can laugh at this, well, ah, it's big, you're not, you're not hunting, mm -hmm. and you're not looking for fat boys, yes. and you're not looking for those that have beards. Yes. You know, we start labeling it. Yep. But there's a whole army because they can pay them. Yes. They have enough money. So, you know, your own job just to continually discredit the Nigerian police. Mm -hmm. On Twitter. On Twitter, on social media. Let us have another, you know. So we, so we Nigerians must be able to clear, be, have a clear view and yeah. see beyond that. So you know what, when our police is working, we must celebrate and appreciate the work. Yes. Thank you, our police officers. <laughs> the kidnapped uh, man that you rescued, you know, in Ogun State and from yes. this state as well. So this particular person, suspect or kidnapper that we're talking about, he fits into so many things that a lot of people find um, admirable these days. So he's a church person. He's a bearded guy, Abi. <laughs> he likes to sing and do Snapchat and do and videos. Then, All the things that we like to watch. Cute. You know, <laughs> if you like that type. You know, he's a motivational speaker. Oh. Oh. Hustle. Hustle. Hustle Keep hustling, don't give up. Hey. Cool. And this is what we follow. And then he has all the followers that we follow him and think he's doing something. And I'm happy, again, I'm saying it, I'm happy that he has been made an example of. And I hope that this case is followed and he's prosecuted appropriately and justice is served. Yes. Because it is important mm -hmm. 
very important that our young children get this lesson and get it quick. quick. Because he's not even that young. He's in his 30s. He's married, maybe with children. Mm -hmm. And we have a group of Nigerians going into their 40s yeah. and into their 50s, behaving like this, believing in people in behaviors like this, teaching the next generation that it's okay. But it is not. And I'm just so happy that we have this example. Let's go to a quick break. When we come back, we continue this conversation and take some phone calls and tweets. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. This call from Essie, calling from the Republic of Ireland. Good morning, Essie. Are you there? Good morning. You're, uh, you're, you're live. How are you today? Very well. I'm good. I think I, I have not watched this video. Uh, uh, I'm just hearing about it now, but uh, I have seen uh, or noticed that uh, it is possible in, in Nigeria that uh, a lot of people manifest this uh, dual personality issues. You know, it is obvious that this guy has uh, a drug personality stuff going on within him. For him to be able to uh, have the church side and, and fool people with the church side and, uh, and, and cry in worship and also that in video and come over to uh, the internet and flaunt the other side, there's so much going on with this guy. Yeah. And for the church, I, I personally, I'm, I, I'm a pastor, and, and, and I, I, I do a lot of uh, itinerary speaking. There was a time not too long ago I came to Nigeria, and while I was speaking, somebody just moved out of the congregation and began to spray money on my head. Uh -uh. I, I, and, and I was offended, upset at that. The pastor was apologizing after, you know, everything. And I believe it's one of the Yahoo, Yahoo boys, they call them. Uh, so these things are written up their ugly heads here and there, you know. It's showing itself in, in churches now. Uh, when I imagine I, I was I was preaching, I, I came in from Ireland to preach in Nigeria, and somebody <laughs> get, got up and started spraying me money as if I was in a marriage. Or, so I was frozen. I, I didn't know what, what was All happening. Right. So Thank the pastor of the church started apologizing. Thank you, Essie. So some some have said that we need special courts for these kind of crimes. So it doesn't go through that whole long stretch. You know how someone is, we have asked to come many years, I'm about, mm. we're talking about four or five years, you know, to get him convicted. Um, others are saying that um, when you have a criminal and the, and the evidences are clear, you know, there are some, you, there are some you have to investigate. But there are some that you have that is very Confess. clear. It's Even crystal the video, clear. He said, Confess. Confess. Only two. So those kind of people, <laughs> should, those kind of people, don't you think should be executed? Because mm. the truth is that if you want to take this issue of crimin um, the, the, the criminal elements we have in our country. If we want to take this matter seriously, we might need to borrow some things from leaf from either China, China <laughs> India, and some Thailand. of these countries. Because the truth is that, whether we like it or not, when people begin to see some drastic measures on the part of government in times like this, maybe they will take us seriously. Because the reason why Nigeria is so rife with these things is because we feel like our law there's enforcement impunity. is weak, mm. there's impunity, I can always there's get out, and it can be a jailbreak, yes. and I'll get out, something will happen, I'll enter jail. the prison and you're living large, large. like large. you're still living well. So I, something I, drastic why, must why happen. Why don't you first of all start with, why don't you first of all start with disassociating? This guy is very politically connected. Mm. The other one, Wadume, was even more politically, he was, yes. he was putting, he was doing a forbadje, he was putting kings on throne in his region. And I wanted to interrupt when Miriam was talking that, you know, each kidnapper in their area, this one was raining in Bayelsa. Mm. Every of them, when, when the crimes become rife, mm. they will colorize it with one ethnic group that, you know, yes. is with distant, they will not be able to find. Mm. So we need to sit up and do things real. Mm. When anybody finds out this person, the first thing you want to hear is every politician who has ever taken a picture mistakenly will say, I do not know. I have no business. People will come out and disassociate quickly, Why, quickly so that he goes and faces his trial in court. Mm -hmm. Let's not be beclouding any crime with connection. Mm. That's all. Let me take this call from Dr. Moyo. Good morning, Dr. Moyo. Are you there? Yes, yes I'm here. Good morning. Thanks for calling. You're live. Yes. I have 
things. I want to I want to clear something though. A church and be or a church goer is different from a Christian. A Christian is a Christ like follower. Mm. Anybody that has no fruit of the spirit is not a Christian. So anybody can be in church. There are two different things. So don't mix up a Christian and a church attendee. So and then so all these tools that pastors encourage people to be doing emotional outbox in church. It does not show it does not mean that you are police spirit you can be crying, you can be doing any kind of drama. It's, our uh, acting chaotic, it does not mean you have to be really <laughs> chaotic. That's there. So, <laughs> those are the things that we need to care. Yes. So, they should also bring a church. Sorry, it's point, point confusing two. the team. Point taking, yes. Yeah, but the a lot truth is that you cannot tell. Yeah. Until something like this happens. Yeah, but we must always know that. But you will refer yeah. to the person as a Christian because the church person goes be. to church, yeah. makes post of himself crying in church. I used to always, I find that weird. You go to church, you're praying to your God, and then there's a camera on you to show how emotional in the spirit you are with your God. There's just some red flags. You know, there's something that he, was say, he said most of the time was like, keep your hustle private. And so that, you know, like he was encouraging, a lot of people were like, we're now calling out people who can be private, like, um, if you're doing something illegal, we can see why you would want to keep it private. But I think that the conversation is really about how you, what you do with, you know, mm. with your wealth. Most people who work hard are actually so, they're private because they don't even have the time to come out and be flaunting the yeah, work. Maybe. And then they don't have the time or the mindset to come and flaunt the end of, you know, the, the work that they've done. With the cash. You are constantly entering into all those bushes, showing people everything. When people pay, are you coming to say, look at what they have paid? <laughs> you know, you have moved on to the next one. There's constantly something that you're doing next. But people that it was, they just sat down, looked at someone, waited for their vulnerable time, collected what, you know, their hard-earned money. Of course, they'll have to come and show it. So it's not really about working in private. I understand that and I think it's a good thing. But it's a red flag for people that come and show raw cash. Mm. It's a red flag. I'm not saying everybody that does it yeah. is a kidnapper, but usually look at that as a such. red flag. Yeah. Secondly, I want to mention something because a particular um, celebrity took this conversation, calling out the girls that this boy has been with and said all the girls that he has been spending money on, mm. why didn't you ever ask him oh, come where on, he that. got the money from? It's good. But I know that many men don't discuss their financial whatever with women. Yeah. But secondly, why are you not calling out his friends, the boys? They'll be like, bros, yeah. show me the no, way. who he was buying out the people, all the drinks for. Good, the ones that he's hanging out bar. with morning till night. The ones that know that, ah, I know decline. this guy now. How did you go from point A to point Z yeah. in a few hours or in a few days? People that, friends of his, that know exactly that this cannot be the right thing. Don't always make it about the girls that he's with. You know, and make it as if it's only women that it's women yeah. that are the sole reason but for think, people behaving. But in I a think it's even way. wrong and disrespectful to begin to accuse the young girls with him because the truth is that a girl can be can hang out with anybody. You can have a friend, your <laughs> friend will, will keep date. yourself your your, your 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 girl. The guy will keep his things secret. Mm -hmm. So if a girl is in company of that, there's a possibility she has no idea what he does. A lot of these girls are just hanging out with friends. So you can't judge somebody until you speak to her to know exactly how close are you? Are you in this with him? There are ways of knowing this, but it's unfair oh, to judge somebody from outside. Fair. No, it's unfair. It's not. It's, it's not, not unfair. It's a, we were raised yeah. to ask somebody, "What did I do for you for gifts?" It's not strange to ask somebody, if, except you're arguing with your friends. You cannot Nima, be like, let us be realistic. Let us be realistic. For the money. He let's be realistic. Hey, he let's, has a let's business. That's not the business. No, you, you don't know that. You, have, uh, you cannot know that. You, you see, cannot know that. Let us be realistic. Call out the girls. That's that, why no, I said Don't call out anybody. Call out somebody else. People are adults. People are responsible. People are in business. People are individuals. And we must respect them. You are not caught. You've been caught. You are the one that the law has something against. Every other person associated with you is not is not the law's business to 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 to, inc to incorporate them into what what you will have it against you no, and the they, girl not and nobody and so and the no, public shouldn't morally. judge them also yeah. so for talking, having associated no, with that we're person talking yeah, what i'm saying we can judge you are you, in fact as a young girl when you are associated with girls and they're caught in setting your parents will start to judge you from inside the house for your association you're supposed to be descending to be wondering what kind of setting you can be sitting with someone and he's taking his call secretly he's, if you're doing business you meet him at his office Don't it's know. not this only when you're he, hanging out at the clubs every day the person is buying out bar that you are uh, start no, top five, you camouflage there. The person that let me take this call you were chopping back the life with him and you did not ask no 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 it's about chopping the life let me take this call from you and i'll come back to you good morning are you there Hello, 
Reverend Koye, good morning. You're live. Go good ahead, please. Good morning. Yes. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Good morning, ladies over there. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, let me first of all start with this. I wonder why you don't have any man on your view. I want you to have a man in your midst. It shouldn't be all ladies' affair. Leaving that aside. The lesson from the arrest of this man. Uh, don't envy any man. Don't measure yourself by the success of any other man. Uh, our elders in Yoruba are saying, So we should be careful. If you are running because somebody else is making it and you are overstretching yourself, uh, you are not doing yourself any good. Leaving that aside, Scripture says, God knows those that are He. It is not everyone you see in the house of God that is in alignment and right standing with God. Many are just there to mark time. Thank God somebody said that much. So the truth of the matter is, serve your God, know your God your own way, worship Him as much as you know, make your ways right with God. Don't envy any man. That is the greatest lesson we learn from this. And right. I hope that will not be lost on us. Good morning Thank to you Thank you very all. much, Reverend. Somebody sent me a message that said, the guy is not a motivational speaker, but shares motivational quotes on social media. So let us not mix it up. I get that. <laughs> Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll, break. we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still discussing this young man who was recently arrested for kidnapping. So you're going to say something. Yeah, I wanted to um, talk to your point concerning um, making a, a, a strong, sending a strong message. I know some states have already passed into law that kidnapping is going to be punished by um, its sentencing to death. But we also know that all of them that are saying sentences to death, people are on death row for years and nobody okay. actually has okay. died from being on death row. So we must become serious. Actually, but 10 years, yeah. A, yeah. Few, a few governments, a few state um, countries looking at what they feel is the most gruesome crime that is painting them really bad created a very equally gruesome punishment just so that they can drive a strong message. Some of them have had issues with human rights, um, um, violations because they feel like the implementation was wrong, but they knew what they were trying to achieve and it was going to be tough to push anything right anyway. So I think that Nigeria needs to, we, we need to decide what are we going to deal with? What are we going, what are we ready to deal with this? And we have agencies, you know, in a few, in a few minutes we'll be talking to the NDLA. They have been very, very effective in dealing with, of course, they are still, they keep finding more and more people, but at least they keep catching them. So what that means is agencies can still work in Nigeria and bring justice to Kidnappers that are caught. So what I want to hear from Bumbi is that so, we can, we, as I said earlier, we can get special courts that would and special uh, that, would, that, would, that would expedite these things. Also, we, we need a very very gruesome, gruesome. Um, mm. um, is this sanction that we can give or some kind of uh, punishment? Punishment. Moral, I, I think that we don't realize the impact of kidnapping on our economy. Many many investors don't feel safe coming to Nigeria because they are scared to go into the different so locations have, because of the kidnapping that happens on the road. I, people will be like, I don't want to I have, have shut this. down my farm. Mm -hmm. People are, several people have shut down they their farms in different remote areas. So when we calculate the impact financially on us as a nation mm -hmm. and it, the way it projects, the image it gives us, we would take it as a very, very, like, this is a terrible thing. To bring we need back to deal with this. Death by hanging. I've said oh, it before. I agree. Oh, oh, this back. one, I agree. Let's give you comments and we wrap up on this. first sign death before we hang. All our governors are giving their life to Christ, so they can't sign death penalty. <laughs> okay, um, so we have um, Illustrative Victor says, with all these easy cliches we hear these days, it has helped in masking fraud and crime. Cliches like, I'm working smart and not hard, mm. or mind your mm. business, small girl, big God, ETC, mm. are different ways for this person. Rolake says, the syndicate has backup. Nothing will happen. This is ah. someone that does not agree. Does it's a Nigerian thing. Most times we cut the branches but ignore the tree. Hush mm. Puppy was a success because it was outside Nigeria. But this story is just a scene of the movie. Now you see me. We hope that our police will be able to prove Rola Kerr wrong. Ogulem Solajumoke says, there's always sign to know who to follow if you want to be legally success, su 
successful. Watch the real hustlers. You don't see them flaunting their wealth on social media to intimidate others. There's, there are always good people to use as role models, but we do, we do prefer quick ways. Um, mm. Hey, he, he was saying, was he said I was making a good point about being raised to question it. Why did okay? Ogumola um, Emmanuel says, now everybody <coughs> gets in Papa Nemo. Don't judge me by my friends. I can be completely unaware of what they truly do. Even wives or, or husbands and children can be fooled by their partners on which work they actually do. This I have a color. Yeah. Sorry. Immaculate Boy says, if I hang around Nima enough and don't see her go to court's office or take calls suggesting to legal business, I have the option of detaching from her if I can't, if I can't ask or vouch to her source of abnormal wealth and expenditure. Mm. That's more. Okay, let me take this call. I think I have final call on this. Good morning. Are you there? Hello. Good morning. Okay, you You're live. Go ahead, please. Okay. My take about the topic. I'm a first-time caller. Welcome to the show. Thank you. My take about the topic is any latest business don't flaunt money. I I I too much believe in anybody that flaunts your money on social media. That business is not latest. And for the man going to church, praying, it's even bizarre for you to be in church and you're using your camera. Even if the, your, even if the program is being covered, the camera, yours should not be something you come and flaunt in on social media, telling us you're a Christian or you're flaunting the way you worship God. It should be done privately and not being shown to people. So I Thank don't you, understand how you be in church and you're flaunting you're doing something that doesn't tell you with what you're practicing what you don't read. I think as we wrap up on this, thank you, Oguchi. I think really the truth is that everybody should walk their path mm. and stop looking right, stop looking left. Stay in your course. Um, yeah, was it was a few days ago when um, when, I, when when you're talking about my that I, I got a car and everything. Mm. He said, right, you've walked something. You said something like that you, you've walked. I can't remember what you said. But you're trying to say that it's been a long time coming. Mm. I've been talking about a car for a long time. I've been driving the yes, same car for, for, for 14 it. years. Mm -hmm. Since 2009, I think, I've been driving. So it's taken a long time to get this point where I was able to purchase the car. And that, that's because I'm not looking right, I'm not looking left. I'm like, oh, I just got a car. Oh, I'm going at my own pace. Exactly. As, the coming, as the money comes, I keep my money. Saving and gradually, money. I get to that point. Mm. So as a Nigerian, and you're working hard, don't be bothered on what people are doing on your left and right. Stay on your own pace. Yeah. You will get to that point. Mm -hmm. And that's why we shouldn't be moved by social media uh, buzz, mm -hmm. social media flamboyance. Mm -hmm. The truth is, we all have our paths. And at some point, we get to our destination. And let us also applaud the, the Nigerian police. Yes. When they goof, we'll be the first day, Eti goof <laughs> But whenever they do well, I think it's important for us to celebrate them, to encourage them, because we need a functional security um, um, services in, in this country. If not, there'll be chaos all over the place. So I'm so happy for this. And we'll, uh, we're going to go on a break and we we'll come back. We're going to bring another amazing department in the Nigerian um, government that actually works. Mm. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're pretty excited to have this our guests. You know, we just this is one of the agencies in Nigeria that we just we love, love to we have love, a conversation. Love. So last week, exactly. let me talk slowly so you can hear me. <laughs> last week, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLE, made the biggest drug recovery in Nigeria's history. Mm. Mm. The crack valued at 194 billion was recovered when the officials of the agencies busted a warehouse in where? Ikorodu here in Lagos State. Mm. Join us on the show now is Mr. Femi Baba Femi, the spokesperson for the ages. Welcome, Mr. Baba Femi, in the building. Thank you, thank you. I feel like um, I feel so elated and um, excited being in the midst of beautiful women like this early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we must first of all acknowledge the hard work of the man in charge. That's the Brigadier General Boba Marua, retired. 
He's the head of the NDLEA and has put together a team that has been able to do such amazing work in the last few years. Tell us about this most recent bust that you had because we made the papers. We saw about five men being displayed. Um, when it's valued, one of, the, one of the first things people think, hmm, one or two of these things would, 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 would escape, yeah. go back into the market. Somebody's going to make some money out of this. Tell us about the procedure from start to finish. Now, let me start from by your conclusion or the suspicion or what some people think out there that yeah. um, with this volume, will dare not, will some not escape yes. into uh, back okay. to our communities again. I'd like to say this for the first time on this platform that uh, by tomorrow, those drugs seized in the Korodu will be out um, for public destruction. Oh, wow. Everything will go down. There's already a court order to that effect. So that would uh, probably reassure those that have... And all of this will be witnessed by civil society, the media. It will wow. be done openly in the presence of everybody. Fantastic. So having said that, I'll go back to um, what led to this. Um, actually, this, um, this cartel is um, the Nigeria branch of an international syndicate hmm. that um, the agency has had its eyes on since 2018, but it's not been possible to track them down because, uh, you know, when you talk of international syndicate, these are people that operate across uh, countries and continents. So they are usually on the move. And even by, by the time we smashed them in Lagos here, the kingpins were picked from different locations. Mm -hmm. And so they were actually shocked, taken um, aback when, um, when they saw our mayor uh, at their doorsteps. Mm -hmm. I also like to acknowledge the fact that um, this was done with the support, technical support of um, our counterparts in the U.S. That's the Drug Enforcement Administration of um, the U.S., USDEA. Uh, we work together on this because when you talk of an international syndicate, you also need your partners across the world to be able to get information, track um, these people, and we're able to track them until um, last weekend when we trace them to the warehouse. I mean... It's where you get to, the, you see the visuals of that place, even the, neighbor, the people in the neighborhood on the street, that's um, Olukunola Street um, in Solebo Estate, Ikorodu, mm. they were amazed. Like the people, they were looking from their balconies, how would this exist in our community? Mm. Yes, they, ne they never believed in that. And uh, they actually, from their own words, they called the place Ghost House because mm. it's a place they never... I mean, no they've just be seeing people, and even if you look at the premises, it's overgrown Ooh. with weeds yeah. and what have you. So very unkept environment. So you won't believe that volume of drugs in excess of almost two, that's um, more than uh, a quarter of um, more than um, uh, a quarter of uh, a billion dollars. That's that's huge. For, I mean, to be found in that kind of a place, and then. But then with the commitment, the passion of the leadership of the agency, for those of us that know General Mara very well, he gives his all mm. when he has a mission, when he has a goal. And that's exactly what... Let me get a few more questions in for you. Go ahead. Yes. So, sir, you know, um, as Mara introduced you, we are very proud of the work you've done, but there will always be questions. And one of the questions I've heard people say concerning this particular boss is, are these really the kingpins? They look like just normal guys. The kingpins are supposed to be big kingpins. men somewhere in some offices. They are directing. These ones are just the errand boys. Mm. That, that, has always, that has always been the perception, public perception, that, oh, they must be... Look, the, the, the people you see, they control billions mm. because they are a member of an international syndicate. So you will not find them um, like the other man you were talking about in the social media or in mm. parties. There are always people who go under who go underground you know. totally. They lie low to avoid um, scrutiny, security. Um, just imagine where that thing was kept in Ikorodu there, in, in a secluded estate where people would not even think such a thing exists. And look at the last time we. Uh, we also busted a, I mean, um, a meth lab in VGC. Mm, yes. in so all of this shows that these people, the modus operandi is to operate in a way that it will not raise suspicion, mm. that will not raise, um, that, that, that they totally go off uh, public scrutiny. So indeed, uh, if there are more people, yeah. you would definitely, the agency will okay. not spare anybody. Right, okay. So here's the worry for me, you know, these places, these, these are like hidden in plain sight and mm. they are neighborhoods. People are in that area. What can, 
I see that would make me suspicious? And how do I inform NDLA that I feel something is going on? Yes, only for that metal because when if the story came out, we now found out all the other side effects of having such a place oh, yes. close to <laughs> other residential areas and people didn't know. So what are the things that can make me spot that this thing is going on here and how can I report it to NDLA for? Yeah, the red flags would always be there. One, when you see a compound always locked during the daytime and in the night there are activities there. The lights are on, the systems are running. See the occultist. Yeah, that, that, that's, 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 um, that's um, a red flag. That's something to, to make you to suspect something um, onto what is going on there. Beyond that, when you see the green, I'm talking of meth lab now, when you see the greens in the neighborhood going uh, yellow, changing from green, changing colors from green to other colors, mm -hmm. that should us, yeah, that should us, that means the soil of that place is already polluted. The wow. waterbed is already um, polluted. Interesting. Then when you see um, waste always being moved out uh, in drums, in bags, and you can't really pinpoint what is being produced there, mm. then all of that should raise... Um, so interesting. Uh, yeah, all, uh, so all of that, people should, I mean, can always draw attention of uh, the NDLA to solve things. And we have, fortunately, we have um, a toll-free line now that people can always reach and give information. That is our 8, 0800 10 20 30 40. It's for those who are struggling with um, drug abuse to get help, and it's also for those that may want to give information to Fantastic. the agency. These types of um, high fences, I know one house, maybe we'll go and <laughs> 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 Don't worry. <laughs> Just give I that to me to off. Uh, Don't worry, I'll give you. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, in the past, what we used to see when they bust you know drug areas like that especially those delta uh bini bust you lose some of your official officials in you know um there's always you know collateral damage some of your officers in fact there was a one raid we took in the papers about four years ago the entire officers on that team were killed hmm. you know and i'm looking that maybe these people now strategize and said okay let's come and do plain sight hiding like Tope talked about coming to communities is is there a change in their strategy or does that one still obtain? And then how do you now, how have you decided uh, better protect your, your officers? Thank you very much. Um, let me quickly answer that. Um, one of the things General Mara did when he came in, uh, don't forget um, his background as a general in the Nigerian Army, was to strengthen the firepower of the agency by um, bringing, bringing on what you call strike force. The strike force is an elite unit of the agency, where armed, where trained. Um, to be able to give cover for our men on the field. And um, in the case of Ikorodu and some all the major operations, you always have them there. And in the, in the particular case in Ikorodu, we also, because we didn't want to have surprises, because you know when you, when you are talking of an international cartel, I may syndicate, um, they have quite a lot of networks. So we didn't want to be taken by surprise. So we also had to ask for um, some backup from men of the Nigerian military, and for those, um, for some of our media people that were there, um, they saw that them giving um, ready at all the ends of the of the street with us. But beyond all of that, always um, our own uh, preparedness for some things. You also see that these people they also had to um, devise. Um, they, 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 you won't see them openly showing or, I mean, uh, their strength or what they are doing. They're always very evasive um, and always very sly. Mm. So, yeah, so that's why um, it makes it extremely difficult to be able to actually track or trail them. But then, in this case, uh, we are glad that we're having, uh, we have um, all the, all we do now is intelligence-led, and beyond that, we also right, deploy right. a lot of technology. I have this question, I'm talking about being sly and, you know, being sleek. There was one person in that video who was wearing yellow. Yes. And when he, he kept saying, I'm a tenant, I'm a tenant. <laughs> and a few of us, were, we hope that people that were not really involved yes. were not mistakenly carried. Is he really a tenant? Even the, son, even, the son, even the son had made a post um, that went viral, I think, over the weekend, saying his father is his and. I had some inquiries, and I, I, you see, there are some of these things we don't respond to immediately, just to, to avoid jeopardizing ongoing investigations. So, so when you see some social media posts and we don't respond, they are deliberate. Okay. We don't want to join issues so that we don't jeopardize certain things. And in that case, um, the man himself is, um, 
is a suspect, I'll call him a suspect of interest, who is cooperating with us and who has also um, explained his own role in the movement of those drugs. Okay. So people should not just, because somebody is saying, I'm a tenor, I don't know, anything, don't just draw conclusions yeah. based on what he is claiming. So, yeah, he might be a tenor, yeah. but he also might be involved. I, I, let's so, <laughs> I, I, I want us to, I have, I have like three questions for you, but let me just start with one. There's a parent watching now and thinking to myself, how does this, how do these things enter our, our system? Hmm. How is it through air? Is it through sea? And when it comes like that, where is it going? Is it going to the community? Is it going out? Are we like a, 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 a transit thoroughfare. thoroughfare for these products? Exactly. How does it, what's the entire flow? Yeah, in, in this particular case, this was brought in through the IC. Don't forget, like I said, it is an international syndicate that, um, and in fact, because um, we work with our partners over there and um, we're able to keep a tap on some of the way they move this thing. And um, in fact, there were quite um, a lot of um, transloading, moving from one big ship to a smaller boat from, and if, at a point, even this was also moved um, through a, a fish uh, vessel, fish boat, that kind of thing. So they try to move to disguise um, the content of all those, but at the end of the day, I mean, everything is down. Now, um, where is it going to? Yeah, where, it is, where is it going to? This, I'll tell you, is not for uh, Nigeria per se. This, they will just warehouse it there and um, there have been plans to move them to parts of Europe, Asia, even Africa. Um, yeah, and let me not talk, let so me not, so that I don't um, give out um, some details that are not necessary or that we're using, we're working on at the moment. But then they were actually meant for other parts of, you see what they do is, um, when they see opportunity to move them to a particular location, warehouse them like that, because that's, that volume is high. Yeah. Something that's the biggest in the history of this country. And now from there, we, when they safely warehouse, then they start moving there. You can see when we got into that place, you see the, um, the truck. There, there, is a, there is a truck there that um, they already loaded, I think, uh, 10 travel bags. Yes, I saw those yeah, those, suitcases. Yeah, yeah, those suitcases. Those are already being prepared for some exports, some other wow. parts of, yeah, yeah. Those, okay. those, those, those bags, yeah. yes. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll open our phone lines, take a few calls. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Um, thanks for staying with us. Go ahead, talk with <laughs> Social media question that why are we destroying so many, the volume of cocaine? Because, you know, for vehicles that are impounded, they sell them, you know, and pharmaceutical companies can use cocaine to produce drugs. And we have a pharmaceutical company here in Nigeria that why, why isn't NDLA considering <laughs> selling this um, huge volume of raw cocaine to pharmaceutical companies within Nigeria who are having to use dollars to source it from, like, outside the country? Well, I, I, I think um, there is no need going that route yet because um, we don't want to take um, chances. Um, let's say, the one, the volume of cocaine involved here, it's not something you can joke with or play with, toy with. Um, it's, um, it's, they are better destroyed. One, even it's not, I mean, we're not, we're destroying it here. Some people like her question, some people are still raising doubts Would some, not escape, yeah, escape into yeah. the... By the time you start talking of um, recycling them, then um, a lot of things will come into the mix. I think we need, we need not um, go that route yet. But then that's not to say that everything we see. Don't also forget now that we go, we do, do not just go after the suspects or the drug exhibits, but we also go after their assets. So their assets seized, like their bank accounts, their vehicles, their what properties. Yeah, all those things that they have acquired. the Jamaicans. Yes. Jamaica, you're gonna... uh, anything, anything we can lay, anything we can lay yeah. pin, 
to him that is required as um, part of the, uh, through the process of this criminal trade will cease and then uh, to be forfeited to the government and then that one can raise revenue and even back accounts. They are quite, well, I mean, so far in the last 20 months we've blocked over, to, I mean, about 600 back accounts. So mm. that is, wow. that's a lot of, um, a lot, a lot of effort there. So all of that at the end of the day, when they are finally forfeited to government, then they come back um, for the benefit of the public. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's a question on Twitter. Let me just take it. Um, he says, I'm not trying to rain on the NDLA's party, patting themselves in the back, but if this volume of drugs came in, they and the border agencies have serious questions to answer. How many such warehouses across the country since our ports are a basket? Mm. So how exactly, you know, do this happen without stemming them from source? Customs and all that. Yes, let's, let's also not... Um, uh, deflect um, responsibilities. All of us, whether as government agencies or as citizens, we all have roles to play in this. It's about our country. It's about our lives. About the, especially even for in drug. I mean, as far as drugs case is concerned, the the most vulnerable are our young people. These are our people. These are the future of the country. So let's not think, oh, it's at the NDLA is not doing well, or this other government agency. It's about all of us. Somebody along the line would have been responsible, would have been part of the process. Yes. So why can that not, is that person not a Nigerian? Mm -hmm. Why can that not person give information? So let's not say it's not about government, it's not about, it's about us, it's about our lives, it's about our future, it's about the future of our children, because these are the vulnerable. These are the people these uh, criminal elements are targeting. Right. Go ahead. Please. Okay, so I have two questions. Usually when we hear about countries maybe like Thailand or the South Asian, um, um, Asian countries, when, usually when foreigners are caught, there is life imprisonment or eventually we hear that they're executed. With the Jamaican, what will happen to him? Do we have, you know, can we... Um, prosecute him here in Nigeria. Absolutely. Would he be no, 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 absolutely. He committed the crime here, so he's going to be prosecuted Fantastic. here. Fantastic. Then, second question is as often as there are drug busts and there's NDLA, the American Drug Agency, constantly on these people's necks, what is it that, what exactly are these people selling? Why is it making such a huge market? Where are they selling it to? Who is buying it? Is it just regular, the ones that we see on TV that we hear, small, 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 small nairas, small, small dollars? That it, is this what these people are basing this business on? Is there something else that just seems so insurmountable for all the different agencies across the world? Uh, don't, don't, don't forget that it's a global uh, trade. It's a global Why? trade. So it's all over, it's all over, it's something all over the world. Even in America, with these years of fighting these menace, they are still. They are still posing, they are still a strong challenge to the U.S. Don't forget, um, even with the best of technologies and um, security systems in place in the U.S., even right from Mexico, these people still were able to dig tunnels up to the U.S. border to be able to bring in smuggled wow. cocaine. It, yeah, so not once, not twice. Why do human beings need it so much? Yeah, because of the money involved. The money involved drives them crazy and they are ready to take any risks. But then what is good, the, I mean, the good news is the law enforcement, especially the drug uh, law enforcement um, agencies across the world were networking. Working at, together. Yeah, working together so as to be able to break their back. One of, I mean, the one that just happened in Korodu is one of such successes right. that has Let been celebrated. Let me take this call well, from Bidemi. Bidemi, are you there? Oh, we lost that call. There's a question that's been on my head. And, and I'm asking this as a Nigerian, as a patriotic Nigerian, because um, I get really worried when, when, when our people are always so ready to condemn what, we, what government and everything. I mean, when the government is, has, has messed up. But I, I always like to look at the light at the end of the tunnel. I like to believe that things can actually get better. How did the general, General Brigadier General Abu Bamarwa, retired, how was he able to get his people to work? like the members of the NDLE, the fact that there's a staff of NDLE wear his red jacket with confidence and walk into bust and, and, and actually submit, here's the cocaine, and actually burns it and goes home and collects his salary and is content. I don't, it doesn't sound Nigerian. Mm. Let me just add this tweet to it because okay. this is in line with Morel's question. Um, Silver Squad says, what is General Buba Marwa doing differently that the mm. agency has now become more efficient? Well, now, um, if, let me quickly go back to last year, 2021, when he came. And one of the first things he did was to appraise 
the readiness of the staff, the officers and men of the agency, how, what's their emotional state? And one of the things he discovered was, okay, these people, quite a number of them have been stagnated for years on the same rank. A lot of them are being owed allowances, a lot, even those that died, their barrier and entitlements, or allowances, and their expenses were not paid. So all of these, he was able to sit uh, with a committee and resolved virtually all. In fact, at a go, more than 70% of the entire workforce was promoted. Mm. Yeah, now that yeah. motivated, God bless you, that boosted the morale of the office. And then, again, something about leadership is this. When they see, when your followers see your sincerity, your commitment, your passion, then, and they know that indeed you are working for them. Like I, I, I just said off here that um, where, where I was there on a trip with him in U.S. State Department where Virtually everything he was talking with the U.S. government has to do with the well-being of the officers and men of the agency, the well-being of the agency, the progress of the agency itself, working for them, not about himself. Mm. All of that, the, these officers and men, they see, mm. they hear, mm. and they are motivated. That's so awesome. they are ready to go all out for you. Like to, uh, to, to Everything can work. Yeah, to, and by Wednesday now, the insurance. I mean, he paid premium insurance to cover those that, I mean, there's people that have been, by Wednesday, they will be paid at the headquarters of the agency. So all, everything that accrued to them, they are being sorted. And so they see all of this happening and he's working on a lot of other, even now there'll be, I mean, barracks, barracks and there are processes to begin there. Uh, construction of barracks over the, for in the 32 years uh, history of the agency there has never been that oh. yeah all of that has been put we in. have to run off thank you so much i think let me take this final call ohoza from dublin ireland good morning are you there ohoza yeah, good morning you're live go ahead please I'm a first -time caller. welcome, welcome to, the to the show, show. I can clap too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i want to i want to uh, respect to talk about that question so what, why join those things instead of sending them to pharmaceutical companies to finance the NDMA for their pressure, buying cars, weapons, and all that? Because mm -hmm. we're we not wasteful. Thank you. Question. I think yeah. Yeah. I already answered that yes. already. I want to also celebrate you because, you know, you. there are many um, agencies that are working we have to run don't have the right PR so we have, Who wants to be a millionaire? So we have to oh, run. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, but thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure well having you. We celebrate. Thank you. We celebrate retired um, and all Brigadier them. General Marwa for his leadership. And obviously, this all starts and ends on leadership. Mm. Thank you. For example. Yes. That's all we can take on this show. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we take Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay. What? Let's see if that voice was right. Which of the options? Teno Chitlan. Teno Chitlan. If you went with Teno Chitlan, that's not the amount you would have won. You would have won two million naira because it was actually the right answer. You do have that voice in your head also. Thank you very much. That's all we can take on the show today. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.